Now this is what I like to call the sucker trap glassware. This seems like it's going to be pretty decent quality, especially if we come in a little more. You can see that we're in the ones place. We've got decimal markings. Well, it seems that way at first. So we should be able to get decimal places, ah, but not too much. Notice there's only five markings between our milliliters, which means that this graduated cylinder will only let us distinguish the whole value and then we can estimate the decimal place. So we get our ones place, we get our decimal place, so for most of this we get two sig figs at the very top line. Yeah, technically we could get a third sig fig from the tens place, but notice that that shouldn't be very significant because that's just bumping up a tiny bit. Our sig fig rules are somewhat crude. That's just because it saves us from having to deal with a whole lot of statistics instead. Statistics are the real way that we do sig figs later on. Now, if we get level, we'd say, okay, that looks to be mm, probably about 5.8, I'd call that, maybe 5.9. And that's as much quality as we're going to get from this, which still seems like it's not too shabby. But here's why you don't want to believe that at all. So I just grabbed four of these completely randomly off the shelf. There was the first four sitting at the front of the cabinet. Now, these bottoms all come off pretty easily. Basically, they're just kind of like test tubes with a little base as a holder to keep it upright with a little bit of a square bottom to it. So, maybe I should have taken these off before I recorded it. Let me just set them down and I'll pop off the others and I'll line them up properly here in a second. Here we are. Okay, so let me get a top view on this and line them up a little better. Oops, in fact here, we'll get it all the way down here. I'm going to use this little strip of paper just to help guide our eye on something in a second. So notice that I'm using this little lip at the edge of the hood to get everything lined up evenly. Now notice how terrible the range from 1 to 0 is. If I get this piece of paper sitting fairly parallel, you'll notice that I've got a massive distribution of volume that we're calling one milliliter. That's going to be present in every one of these. And also notice that it's going to be a variable percentage depending on how full we end up filling this thing. Now that tells you right away, we may have some precision, but we've got no accuracy. So don't trust this as anything other than a very crude guide of how much volume you've got. That's great when you're doing a lot of organic reactions because you just need to have some idea of how much excess reagent you've got to make sure that you put in enough but you're not wasting a small fortune. That's really about all that graduated cylinders are good for. Holding some solution before you dump it in without caring too much about the real volume in it. So be very careful. Don't start calling these real volumes or I'm going to have to make fun of you.